This lesson will continue with Unit 3, Area of Study 1, Global Actors, and continue our examination of the challenges to state sovereignty. Today, we'll be looking at the second of the three challenges to state sovereignty you need to know in the study design, contested and changing borders. One of the most definitive features of the state are its borders. Borders determine where one state's sovereign territory ends and another's begins, as well as being a great photo opportunity for backpackers to look adventurous, despite the fact that millions of people cross international borders every day for work. And just head for the border. So when you finally make it to get your visa stamp, this is what the building looks like, just in case. Um, be careful of the guys out there because they are non-stop on your way here. Many of the current borders were determined just after World War I, not without some controversy. The emergence of another wave of states in the 1950s and 60s in a period known as decolonization led to the maps being redrawn again. Many of the borders that were drawn over time were kind of arbitrary in that they didn't take into account the complex social, historical, or cultural groups that they were actually pushing together and locking into these states. I put it lightly when I say this has caused quite a few global dramas. Borders can be contested and challenged in a range of ways. Today I'm just going to look at one, separatism. Separatism, as the name suggests, is basically when a group of people come together and try and separate themselves from a state. This may occur because the people who are trying to separate find themselves distinct in terms of language, culture, ethnicity, history, society, and feel as though the state's government doesn't properly represent them. One example of this dynamic are the Kurds in the Middle East. Kurdistan is a nation without a state. Instead, the Kurds are split across four countries, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and Iran. The Kurds have an extremely strong sense of their own identity in terms of ethnicity, language, culture, society, which differentiates often radically from the countries in which they find themselves locked. This has compounded the feeling of not being represented by the state in which they find themselves, and therefore their calls over time for a separate Kurdish state. In the 1970s, for example, Kurds in Turkey began calling for separation from Turkey and the creation of their own state. So how do you think the Turkish government reacted to these calls for separatism? A. Badly. B. Badly. Or C. All of the above. That's right, the Turkish government reacted very harshly towards this threat to its sovereignty, rejecting calls for a Kurdish state and cracking down extremely brutally on Kurdish nationalism. In turn, armed Kurdish groups arose to challenge the Turkish state directly, which has led to a brutal conflict lasting decades and costing the lives of 40,000 people, Turkish and Kurdish. This is a very illustrative example of how states can react to their borders being contested. Acts of self-determination or separatism are going to incur the wrath of the state completely. Oh, hey, man. Hey, Lev, what's craking? Oh, not much, dude. Uh, you enjoying the beer pong and uh, having a good time? Me, me and some mates are actually thinking of splitting off and heading over to a different party. Hope that's okay. Nobody leaves! Everybody stays! Yeah, no, I'll hang out a bit more, actually, then. This often dilutes the efforts of separatists because state power is so much greater than that of the separatists. In turn, states generally are able to keep control of their borders, even if it's through brutal repression. So, takeaway two. A state sovereignty can be challenged by efforts by groups of people to break away from the state, known as separatism. However, state governments will often react harshly to such challenges, undermining efforts to separate. Next lesson, we're going to look at issues that require multilateral resolution. 